So we're back. Uh, I'm John from Learn to Paint Better. And we're back to do episode two or part two of this particular study, Source of Light. Now you'll notice that since uh, we finished this stage of the painting, the underpainting, I noticed that the colors have actually toned down or they've actually faded out a little bit. And that's to be expected with acrylic paints because uh, they tend to dry a little bit lighter than when we put them on when they're wet. And this is one of the main reasons why we actually have a two-stage working process. Stage one, we, we create the underpainting. And in stage two, we make the finished painting. So we heard stage two, we're gonna work on the finished painting now. So right away, I can see that I need to adjust the values uh, to get the values back to where the target painting or the subject painting is. The subject painting, by the way, I've realized something, that perhaps what we should do is include a photograph of the subject painting in the links below so that you can print that picture out and work from it on your own if you don't want to be working in front of your computer on the video. If you're at your easel, you can actually print this out and work from that as well as working with from the video. So we'll put that in the link below in the future. Now, starting with my palette again, I've got the same palette. I actually reloaded my palette because the one I had dried out a little bit. So um, again, the palette is organized the same way every time. Our blues, our reds, our yellows, our raw umber color, and our white. So we're gonna look to it starting, working from the top down again. We're gonna start by filling in the blue of the sky holes. And I'm picking up a little bit of cerulean blue there. Because I can see from the target painting or this master painting that the colors are a little stronger than I have. And as I said, the acrylic has dried out quite a bit. It's dried back quite a bit, I should say. Into that cerulean, I'm just going to add a little bit of raw umber just to gray it down a little bit because the color is very pure and very strong. That's about where I want to be, right there. So, as I mentioned in episode one or part one, make sure that you maintain this brush stroke in a 45 degree direction. And in that episode, I said there was a design reason for this. And I'll explain it now. What we're trying to get up here is the effect of clouds that are wind blown. There's very high winds up there and they're being torn apart by these high winds. So by maintaining this 45 degree direction, using both of these colors, both the blue color in the sky holes between the clouds, and in a minute, we're gonna do the same thing with the clouds themselves. We're going to simulate the idea. I think I just need to tighten that down a little bit. We're going to simulate the idea that the wind is tearing these clouds into very wispy ribbons. And you just want to kind of scrub those until we get. I'm just going to move this back and lock it a bit because it keeps lining out on me. We'll do that. And I'm just mixing up a bit more of that color. Remember just to put always put that touch of raw umber in that color just to gray it off a little bit if you don't want it to seem unnatural. And then on up into this area. Uh, you notice I'm not being too careful with the edges. It doesn't matter if we're very precise right here because when we put in the yellow from the clouds, the yellow clouds, we're going to let these two colors overlap a little bit and that'll give us an idea of wispiness that we want. So you just want to work with your blue until you're pretty well eliminated the base print drawing that you're working from. 
at this point we don't really want to see any of that black or rather I think it was a raw umber color that created the base print okay that looks pretty good so just wash that brush out a little bit and you notice continually I'm using the same tray area on my palette to mix my colors and what I like to do is just continue working from the color that I've just used and blend into the next one and doing that we get a nice kind of unity throughout the painting so taking that wash that I just started I'm going to go after these cloud colors now now I see they're quite a bit lighter on the master and I got quite a bit of yellow so we need more white so I'm going to pick up a lot of white into that mix and I'm mixing it right into that, that blue I just used. But this time I gotta pick up just a touch of yellow ochre just to give it a yellow cast. We wanna warm them up a bit at this point. And again, we're gonna keep using just, keep adding the slightest bit of raw umber to gray those colors down. I think we're pretty close now. Now one thing I want to remind you of when you're mixing paint like this is you want to make sure in your color you're mixing you mix all the white in thoroughly because if you don't what happens is that white's going to show up on your canvas and it's going to create an effect that we call icing or frosting. So mix your whites in really good. And again, coming back, we're using that same 45 degree angle across these clouds. Now I want to be eliminating any remainder of the base print that's in there. As I've said before, and I'll say again, don't create areas that are too solid. Let some of your underpainting survive here. Now around these rocks you want to be careful, you don't have to be real precise, but just careful not to run too far into them, because we'd have to paint them out. And the problem we have when we run our opaque white over the dark is we lose a principle in painting that's called, trans meaning transparent darks and opaque lights. We want to keep our darks as transparent as we can, but our lights opaque. So be careful on this edge because it's almost impossible to cover an opaque white with a transparent dark. Now you'll notice I've gotten a little bit lighter at the horizon because the sky will naturally lighten as you get close to the horizon. And I just keep adding a little bit of white into my mixture. Down here it's pretty light, so I'm kind of indicating that. And again, watch you don't go too far over that dark horizon line here with your final white. All the time maintaining this same 45 degree angle. When you're painting this kind of subject or this kind of area, don't curve your brush. Don't curve your brush. That'll give a distorted impression of the image you're trying to paint. You want to work in really nice straight lines. And in this particular study, maintaining this 45 degree angle. It takes a bit of time to fill this in because we're trying to create some body into these clouds and some texture and substance as if they're pretty dense and they would be over the ocean like this they would be very dense full of moisture 
and I'm just eliminating what's left of my base print in here now. I can see a few dark lines left, but they should be pretty well gone at this point. And all throughout that, I've maintained that 45 degree angle like that. You'll notice, it seems, or it appears more now that this cloud has some variation to it and it's got some depth. Now I'm going to go up and finish a little higher. When I'm going higher, I want to make it a little bit yellower. So I'm adding more of that uh, yellow ochre to that mix and a touch, again, always using just a touch of raw umber. That touch of raw umber, again, is just used to gray the color a bit so it doesn't appear to be too bright. And with my white reservoir, I'm just pulling the white into the mix as I feel I need it, just to lighten that color up ever so slightly. That yellow ochre is a strong tint, so you have to make sure that you just pull in enough white to get it back. Okay, so away from the horizon, up higher now, still maintaining that 45 degree angle, I've got a slightly different color happening. It's a weightier color. It's nice and creamy now. So we've got some nice weight coming into those clouds. Now here is where you don't need to be really careful on your edges because as I mentioned a few minutes ago, we want it to seem like the high winds are pulling these clouds apart. And from a compositional point of view, the clouds are getting, or from a value point of view, the clouds are getting darker as they get higher. So my lightest lights are towards the horizon and my darker lights are higher in the sky. And that looks pretty good. I think we've got that idea of wind-torn clouds happening. And you notice I'm just scrubbing across those blue areas until I get the feeling that I want. And I think that's just about it right there. Nice high wind-blown clouds. Now anywhere that you think you may have a little bit too much color, too much weight of paint, you can just use your wadded up paper towel and take some of it back. And as you recall, I've said in other videos that acrylics dry very quickly, so you've got very little blending time. And one of the ways to blend acrylics is by doing exactly what I'm doing, just wiping it through. There, that looks good. I think our sky is pretty well finished. If you see any little details that don't make sense, just paint them off, paint them over. I've still got some underpainting. I have actually base print surviving there. But that looks pretty good. Okay, now we're going to work our way down. We're still using only two brushes, a num two number eights and a number four. And I'm using one of the number eights for my lights and the other number eight for my darks. So my other number eight, I've got it sitting on my water tray waiting. So. We're going to pull a lot more white into that mix now. So we have a much lighter value. Bring it over. A much lighter value in this back wave color than we have in that sky. So I've added quite a bit of white. I'm still working in the same mix. I've added quite a bit of white. And I'm just going to go into this back wave now and finish it easily, just like that. There we go. So that back wave is basically done. That's all we had to do, and it's distant. And we can continue using that same color, and we're gonna go into the sunlit waves here now and start modeling them out with that same color.
Now it's really important at this point that you work in the direction of this wave. If you paint across the wave like this, it won't make any sense and it won't be convincing. To make a very convincing breaking wave, you want to paint in the direction as much as possible of that breaking surf, like this. And you notice I'm just trying to make one, one brush stroke wherever possible. So I'm not getting too much detail in here. And at this point in this picture, this direction of breaking waves changes like that. So make sure you make that change as well. The direction is now going this way. And back here it's this way. Just in there, I can see underpaint. Oh, I can see base print coming through, so I'm just going to bring my wave up to it like that. You want to start to be kind of careful with your picture now. We need to make sure that we're faithful to the drawing that's there to get the idea of breaking waves. That's a pretty good right there, I think. Okay. Now while we're here, there is some of this light color, same light color, I'm using the same color, in the broken surf or the broken waves here. So this is where you just want to scumble them in. Now the key with water, especially, especially broken surf like that, is try and make S patterns. It makes sense, that's the way the water would break just in S patterns like that. We don't have to be too perfect at this point because we're going to come back at the very end with our number four. We're going to clean it up. Just some S patterns like that. I'm just doing that. Okay. So, we can wash out our brush now because we're much too light. And now we want to gradually progress backwards in on this wave, breaking wave, backwards this way, and which means the colors are going to darken gradually. So, let's just mix up a new mix. And put some cerulean blue into that. And some ultramarine. And start mixing that up for a second. Okay, okay so I, I just pulled some of that ultramarine in. I'm going to pull some more of the cerulean blue in because I'm trying to get a certain shift difference in color, a touch of the umber. So I'm pretty close to where I want to be. There we go. So it's kind of a steel gray now because I've com combined those two blues and a bit of umber. I got kind of a nice steel gray. And here we're just going to work on top of these waves that are breaking right in here in the shade. So, still working in the direction of the wave. I'm going to put these, finish up these shaded areas. like that and back here behind the white that we just put in carefully carefully put these in now and if you stay faithful to your base print drawing now you'll maintain the right design now I'm getting I feel I'm getting a little bit too much paint on there so I just wipe it back again so I can let the painting breathe a bit. 
and some of the underpainting show through. And you're being very careful here, making sure your strokes are going in the direction of the wave. Now there's a slight design change here. There's a slight uh, directional change here. Whereas the white caps at the front of the wave are actually curling, the top of the wave is a little flatter. So kind of maintain the idea that this is a shelf of water that's breaking right here. So while I'm still going in this direction, I'm also trying to maintain kind of that direction as well. And just get in there. This is the point where the painting changes, the break of the wave changes direction from this to this direction here. So you want that effect of a shelf there. And you do that by just adding almost horizontal lines like this. Now you can see the paint starting to sit up there nicely for me. And I'm going both directions. There we go. So I've set up a shelf and I've got my waves coming down. Good. That looks good. Now further in the bottom here, there's some of the same color. Right in here, there's a little bit right in there. So we'll put that in. And then lower down, coming off, it's the same color that's coming off this rock here. This is water that's already broken, waves that are broken, and it's running back down the rock. And this wave that's further in, we need to change that value a little bit. So it's pretty much the same as that one. And the reason for that is because the source of light. In this picture, in the main picture, we can see the light is hitting the top of the cliff, the wave in the background, the front of the breaking wave, a little bit of the foam in front of it. But this wave and these rocks are all in shadow. This is shadow, this is all shadow. So this color is gonna be essentially the same as that one because it's in shadow. So getting down in here, let's just scrub in more of that color in the front of that wave down there. And I'm being careful to let some of this uh, underpainting survive now. I need to just raise this up a little bit to get at the bottom of the canvas. I'm constantly finding that I've got a line across the bottom because because I couldn't quite get to the bottom. So the way to get around that is just raise your canvas up to the ledge and then just paint in that area. That's good, right there. Okay. Okay, that's looking good. I've got pretty much the same color in this, uh, in this shaded area shadow area as I do back there. So, and I'm just going to wipe a bit of it out because I see my color is getting pretty solid. Wiping color back and letting some of that, that underpainting show through it will give your painting a real sparkle. It's going to unify the whole thing because that, that underpainting is, is in so many places and it unifies it and you get some sparkle. In that shadow, it just wouldn't be a solid color, a solid value. There'd be all kinds of slight changes in there. So when the underpainting is actually sparkling through like that, it indicates some of those changes. On the top of these waves that are breaking, I've allowed some very heavy paint on top because I believe it would be very solid right there and I don't want the underpainting showing through. But as a rule, it's nice to have these things throw, show through like that. Okay, so that's pretty well consistent with the drawing now. Now I want to go back. We'll take a look at the drawing. And we can see there is kind of a, a second wave. This is the first one. This is the second one. This is the third. And here's the fourth. We need to go back and finish up that second one there. And on my canvas here, you can see I've indicated it's 
has a different value because it's it's quite different from the one in front. The one in front's quite quite blue. The one behind is a bit on the purple chip, and it's probably a bit too far. We do want it different, but not that far. And to change that, to fix that, so we're gonna we're gonna work with the color that we've still got. I just want to add the slightest bit of cadmium red. I have just the tiniest bit on my brush and I'm going to add that in. And it's so strong, that cadmium red is so strong it can almost turn that blue to purple instantly. So we're just going to mix that, mix that really well. Yeah, that's pretty well what I want. Now the only thing I want to do is the color is a bit too pure and the way we do we kill that or tone it gray it down is we use our raw umber. And raw umber is very good. Very good at graying down a value. And I want this to be a little stronger, so I'm going to add some ultramarine just to give it a little bit more weight. And pretty close. The tiniest bit of gain of red, cadmium red. So I've kind of got this uh, very gray blue purpley color. We'll just test that. Oh, and that's looking pretty close to what I want. So now let's carefully put that wave in. Pay very close attention now to your base print drawing outlines because you don't want these two to lose their separation. So I'm scumbling in. there. I think it's still a little bit too purple so I'm going to gray it again with my uh, raw umber. So I grayed it up quite a bit. It's coming close to what I want now. I'm trying very much though still to maintain the idea with my brush strokes and direction that it is a wave coming this way. At the top of this wave here, you can actually do what I just did. Some very loose strokes, brushwork there kind of indicates some spray coming off that wave. That's starting to look pretty good. I think we're almost there. Yeah, we are there. Um, I like this color and I realize as I'm looking here that probably this blue is a little strong. So I'm going to take that very same color and I'm just going to go into this blue and kill a bit of that blue color by using that color of the back wave. At the same time I kind of unify those two together like that. We're just using this color now to gray that front blue a bit. Because after seeing those two together, and this, this happens a lot in paintings. After seeing these two colors, these two waves together, I realize that the values aren't, the relationship isn't quite right. And the good way to fix that is just put some of the, the other value into the front one. And I'll get those two values closer, but they're still distinctly different. distinctly different there and likewise I'm going to move some of this color back up front here to this front wave just by scrubbing it in and up that uh, little bit of water coming down that rock so by doing that I've accomplished two things 
I've made the values closer to each other, and they are close. And I've unified these areas. All right, I think we're pretty well there. Okay, so the only other things I can see in the water here is we have a slightly different color that's kind of greeny gray instead of bluey gray. So we'll pick up a bit more of that cerulean blue and a touch, we're gonna to put a touch of this yellow ochre in it and it's gone quite green. So I'm gonna add some more cerulean blue to that. And it's quite foam green now. So I'm going to pick up my raw umber, which I'm going to use to kill the color a little bit. And maybe a touch of white in there. A little bit more of that cerulean blue because I, I want to be more blue than gray. That's looking pretty good. Okay, and so we're going to go right underneath this cliff face here and just put that third value then like that okay so so I'm seeing that as too dark and too green so to fix it being too dark I'm going to add a lot of white and to fix it being a bit too green I'm going to add a little bit, bit of blue that cerulean blue. I'm going to put a touch of ultramarine in there too. There we go. Right away when you put that ultramarine in you kind of get a different shift, a different shift on your on your blue. Let's just wipe this back a bit because it's a little bit too dark so I'm going to take some of that paint out. And this should be quite a bit lighter and grayer than my original attempt. So let's just try it again. Doesn't seem that much lighter to me. So we obviously we're too bright. I just added a lot of white to that mix. Again, I'm gonna wipe back. You notice as you're finishing a painting, you're constantly looking at the relationship between the values. And what seemed appropriate in the underpainting is now too dark. So I'm trying to get lighter right in here. That's better. That's where I want to be like that quite a bit better good that's where I want to be and I'm going to start to put a bit of that in the top of the waves like that and this is given that waves now it's starting to give those waves some definition make sure that you're painting in the direction of the breaking wave so I'm just scumbling some of that same color in on the top of these waves. Right over the blue. Good. It's unifying now. And there's quite a bit more of this color in this, in this foam here. Like that. Okay. That looks good. I'm just going to change my brush now to my number four because I want to put some final touches while I still have this color. I want to put some final touches that are a little bit more accurate in here so I'm just using this number four now remember what I said about in the water you want to try and create S patterns so continuing with that color I, I, I'm gonna model we put these S shapes in I'm just gonna model some of these a little bit because the transition from wave the wave the tabletop of the wave to the front face would be indicated by 
a, a value that's between the light and the dark and this is a very good one so we'll, we're going to use that to make these indications like this remember back here the wave changed and I got to just actually pull a few through right through into the front of the wave like that so that we can start to give these wave breaking waves some definition in there and because I'm using a similar color I'm maintaining harmony this looks nice in here this color so that light is just kind of indicating that waves breaking up similarly we can put a bit of this in this wave because it wouldn't be all one value back here it would break a little bit so just along the wave crest just put a little bit of that other color there and you can put a bit of this in a few places here just to indicate a bit of values changing color shifting in the shadows some in here too Good. All right. I think we're looking pretty good. So we are going to switch brushes now. <clears throat> we want to use now, we want to use our dark brush. <clears throat> and in doing that, I'm just going to wipe a bit of that out because I'm going to shift color completely. I'm going to give my palette of spritz just to keep it workable and we're going to go into the darks here and remember I said earlier we want to try and maintain kind of transparent darks and opaque lights so I'm mixing I'm just mixing up some ultramarine blue together with raw umber like that to get a dark tone Probably a little bit more umber. And I'm just going to put a touch of the sienna in it just to warm it a bit. Okay, good. More umber. Okay, so I got this dark now. It's, let's say it's semi transparent. We want to get in now and we want to indicate the really dark areas of our rock face. Like this. Just coming in. Like this. Again, I'm maintaining, carefully maintaining the direction. When I'm putting this in, I'm maintaining the direction of the object I'm painting. So this is a cliff face coming downward. And now I'm putting in the dark value. Careful here against at the point where your wave is meeting the breaking ocean. Sorry, where your wave is meeting the cliff face. Watch your base print now. You want to be watching for that underpainting, under that base print drawing now. And try and maintain one direction on all of these. And when I get, when I think it's getting a little bit too solid, I just wipe it back. Just managed to pick up some white paint then, I don't know how. But wipe this back. Once you've got it in, dragging in the direction of the cliff face. And that's going to create all kinds of nice little variations inside that cliff face. Because even though this, even though this is in, sh in shadow, it's still going to have a lot of what's called reflected light. And the lights can be reflecting off this pool and the front of this breaking wave and throwing light up into that cliff face. 
So if you notice, I haven't put a lot of paint here. Just trying to get bit, rid of that white. I managed to pick up some white out of my right out, out of here accidentally and put it in there. So I just want to make sure that that is gone. And just make sure that my darks are well indicated. But not solid. I'm not painting solid darks. You'll notice. I'm letting a lot of the underpainting survive here. So I'm going to just scumble some of this area. You know, that doesn't help. I want to scumble like this over some of those lights with my brush. And especially down right at the uh, base where the two meet. And I just want to try and make sure that the direction there is like that. Okay, that's really it. You don't want to put any more color, any more dark on that face. That's a bit strong, so I'm just taking it back a bit. And let's continue. Similarly, let's finish up in the foreground rock. So let's just go over that. Now I've got a lot of the underpainting showing through here. Probably too much. I just want to close in some of those brights areas that are showing through. And these war rocks are actually submerged, so they're just roughly indicated. And let's move on to the most foreground rock. Now this would be this would be pretty dark, but we don't want because, but because it's the closest rock to us, actually we're going to be able to see a lot of color here. So I'm working in the same mix. I've just added some ultramarine. I'm going to add some more raw umber. And I'm going to pick up a bit of orange because I want this to have a real warmth to it. Even though it's in the dark, I want it to have a real nice warmth to it. Now there's two rocks here. This is the foreground rock, so we're going to put the warmest color. I'm just going to put a bit more right in here, and I'm just going to scrub in the top of the rock. Be careful now. Keep your rock edges very angular. You want no curving lines here. These are rocks. They do not go in curved angles, curved directions, curved shapes. So just indicate, based on what you've already got there, kind of follow your pattern that you've established, and very quickly, very simply, just put indicate that, that foremost rock. And I just want to see if that value is right. I think it could be a bit strong in places, so I'm going to wipe some of it back. Like that. Okay, I think that's pretty good right there. We're going to define that rock in a minute with our number four, but for now, that's about where I want it to be. They said this is the closest rock to me, so I'm going to see the most color. This rock is a little bit further back, so I'm going to add some ultramarine to my mix now just to gray that color down a bit and darken it a bit. And again, I'm just going to indicate over what I already had yesterday in our last painting session. That rock and this one here. There we go. Okay. It's looking pretty good. I just see that it's a bit strong. So I'm wiping it out. I want just wiping it out where I think the paint's just a little bit too intense. I'm pretty happy with that. Yeah, I think that I think that works for us. So 
When you're painting the rocks, when you first put them in, you want to make sure your brush strokes are kind of angular because rocks are very angular. Don't make curved shapes or round or soft shapes here. You want them angular like rocks. The other thing is, when we did it yesterday, we just did it in a few very quick strokes. And today, I'm just finding those same places and going back over it with my color that's now adjusted to the values of my entire painting. So I'm leaving lots of space to breathe and I'm following the pattern that I established yesterday. <clears throat> that's pretty well it for that rock. So let's get out of that dark number eight brush. I'm gonna go back to number four. <clears throat> now for me, this is one of the best parts of painting. We're going to take ultramarine on our four and mix it into what we've got there. So just I'm mixing ultramarine right into that. So I got a pretty dark line here. And we're going to do something that I call getting rid of the fog. <laughs> and getting rid of the fog just means we're going to define some of the shapes a little better than they're defined. So it's pretty dark. So we're going to use this in the dark shapes. And I just want to make some definition kind of at the edge here of that rock. And I want to pull some of these crevice lines out to give the rock, the cliff face, a bit more definition than it has, just like this. Because there would be all kinds of nooks and crannies in there that are somewhat pretty dark, I think. And this will help your viewer understand the design of the picture. And at this top edge, be careful because this is where your clouds meet. So you just want to just kind of do what I'm doing, which is kind of outlining the top edge like that. Now there's an actual reason why the top edge of that surface would actually be appear to be a dark line. And that's because the surface is rolling. And as it rolls, you get this dark line formed. It's, we're just going that way, but you're seeing more of it. So that dark line is forming and that's indicating that roll. So I think that looks pretty good for the rock. Now let's go and continue with the same color and finish our rocks. All we're doing is just pulling out basically the drawing and some edges to indicate features in the rock that are in shadow. It's this way it's not just a solid mass. And I'm still working with that mix of ultramarine into the dark that I had. And see, now I'm modeling those rocks based on what I can see from the underpainting. I just want to make that look like more of a flat surface shelf on that rock. Be careful here where your light meets your dark. Be careful. So I'm going to indicate there's another shelf there. And striations here. So I'm giving these rocks a bit of definition, character here. They can come like this, up at the edge again. Okay, I think I'm just, just about done. I just added a little bit more ultramarine into that mix because I want these points where the darks and the lights meet to be very intense. So I got a real dark here and a real light behind it. I want that to be intense. And the reason I want that to be intense is because <clears throat> The rule of painting is darks advance and lights recede. So I want this dark to come forward 
that light is going back and that's going to give me the sense of depth three di three dimensionality so anywhere you think that the rock could use a little bit of detail and not a lot you don't want to be detailing every crevice and crack just put in a little bit and as long as your design looks right and mine does don't overwork it so I'm going to consider those rocks finished we're going to wash that brush out get most of that dark and I'm going to pick up ultramarine again but what I'm going to do this time is I'm going to go into an area where I haven't got a prior mix so right up here on this wall of the palette I'm going to take some pure ultramarine now a touch of raw umber so I've got a dark but I want this dark to be very much on the blue side very much on the blue side I'm just carefully working it okay that's about right so I got it's about navy blue and what we're going to do is we're just going to add some definition in these shaded areas using this ultramarine mix underneath the bottom of the waves see there's some and just bringing a little bit of definition into the breaking waves themselves. So I'm going in the direction of the waves like this and I'm putting in a dark color that's complementary to the lighter one that we put in and I'm indicating where the top of the breaking wave is here now. So I've got some real definition there. There we go. I might have gotten a little strong right there, so I'm just going to take it back a bit, and there. That looks pretty good. Still working that color. We want to go in here and put this dark underneath. And I'm actually just tracing over now where the base print is still showing through. I'm actually hitting it with this nice kind of navy blue color because there would be a shadow formed underneath that edge as this wave curled and I'm going to continue to define some of this wave here like that so all I'm doing is giving them form that they don't have well they do but not enough and your base print should be telling you where to do this. I can see the base print guidelines there. So where I see it, I'm just putting a little bit of this blue in now. Like that. And you can just continue working like this. I'm putting a bit in this front wave now for definition. So I'm continuing to use this kind of thin um, wash of uh, ultramarine blue and I'm just again I'm just picking out some areas that I want to emphasize just to get some detail that uh, that will kind of break up some of these big planes of color like that so just bring out little bits of detail with the ultramarine I'm just going to de define this wave back here a little bit better because I think it could use it. And that's just by scumbling along the top of the wave. I'm going to strengthen this color here a little bit because I think it needs it. And I'm just using that ultramarine. That's all. So I'm just going to make that value a little bit stronger in there just to pronounce the difference between them. Looking good. Still using the ultramarine, just pulling it in. There's a few areas that I would like to emphasize a little bit more back in here, just to give this cliff face a little bit more character and definition. And I've done that wave. Anywhere you're seeing the base print still come through, you want to be covering it now. 
And that's why we use this light wash of ultramarine just to do all these last minute things. I like this top of this wave to seem a little bit more like a tabletop back there. So a little bit flatter on the top. So I'm just going to put a few lines that are going in that direction just to give it a sense of flatness in there. Okay, I put a little bit of uh, definition in the front wave as well. And I'm just going to harden up some of the edges on the rock. This is something, this is a good example of what I call fog right here. It's kind of one color encroaching into that light, some of the dark. And so you don't have a real solid edge there. So you want to just do that. Just want to solidify that edge so that what I call fog goes away. Okay, this one back here is base print. Instead of base print, I just rather have color coming through. And I'm going to indicate some direction here as well. Okay, overall, it's looking pretty good to me. I think I've accomplished direction. I think I've accomplished uh, separation in terms of light source. Now, it's at this stage of the painting where you look at the entire painting. We're pretty well done. But this is where you look at the painting and say, is there any value changes that I should make? Or have I got some brights too bright or some darks too dark? I think we have pretty good balance. The only thing I'm a little concerned with is my whites here are a little bit too stark. They wouldn't be quite that white. So I want to gray them down. And in order to gray them down, I'm going to come back into my white mix here. I haven't cleaned out my brush. I had that ultramarine blue on there. I'm just picking up some of what we already had because I've got a nice gray as a result. And for example, right there, that mark there is a bit too dark. So I'm just going to come through it with a gray with that grayed down white. And right here, it's a bit too dark. Just these darks are just a little bit too strong. So we're just graying them down a little bit. We can pull some gray into the top of this wave a bit. Like that. You use your finger to, to blend. It's OK. And I've, Right into that, right into that grade mix. I, I want it a little bit warmer, so I'm just going to touch some ochre into it. Maybe I'll even touch some sienna into it because it's a little bit stark. There we go. Just to warm it up a bit, because we know we know that we are in pretty much sunlight now, and that sunlight would have a bit of a yellow cast. So I'm just finishing up. Again, it's with this number four brush now. Some areas with this fairly light white. Just getting in there and adjusting values a bit. Just where things are a little bit too hot. Again, pulling that white out there. There's some areas in here that I want a little bit Show a little bit of like this. Surprisingly, this is just a grayed up white. And it's funny how a grayed up white actually looks whiter than a white. Yeah, that's looking pretty good. I think we're just going to go into these wave faces a little bit. Pull out some. Pull out a little bit more of these details here. I'm just making a value adjustment there. That's looking pretty good. We just continue through. I don't mind heavy paint now. 
I'm just picking up and indicating where these would be breaking in that light. Sometimes you just have to stand back a little bit and check your values. We're pretty close. Because the white is grayed, I'm losing that coldness that was there a few minutes ago. All right. All right, what do we think? I think we're just about there. And when you get to this point with the painting, when you feel like you're just about there, you're probably there. Because I found if you go further beyond this, you tend to overwork the painting and you lose some of the freshness and spontaneity that you had. So I think that finishes Source of Light. I just want to summarize or, or um, go over what the lesson was. In every painting, there is a source of light. You want to try and be aware of that, where that source of light is before you start to paint because it's going to tell you where your dark should be and where your light should be and what should make sense. In this particular painting, it's clear that the source of light is the sun coming from high above my left shoulder here. And it's the sunlight is hitting kind of the top of the cliff and it's hitting the face of the breaking wave and it's hitting the pool in front. These rocks and this breaking wave are in the shade. There's no light here. Similarly, that wave there is also in the shade, shaded area. So this is a really good study for source of light because we have light, we have light, we have light, and then we have dark, dark, dark. Source of light, always important in your painting. Make sure you find out where it is before you start. That finishes this episode of Learn to Paint Better. Uh, I invite you to come to our next episode, which I believe is going to be called High Key. Uh, in the meantime, Please like and subscribe to my page, and I'll see you then. Bye for now.